the airlines that will be flying in and out of Ireland in the next year after it's reopened? Who, who will those airlines be outside of Aer Lingus and Ryanair? Will it be predominantly those? And, and in terms of percentage of reduction in, in routes, what will be the percentage reduction in the size of these airlines and the number of routes they're flying over the next year? I, I suspect uh, it'll be about 30% smaller, and that will impact on destinations that are being served, frequency of services, um, you know, seasonal versus year-round, uh, you know, three days, five days a week instead of weekly uh, or, or a daily service. You know, it's going to take a, a, a number of forms. Uh, and but the, based and on the, what I see at the moment, about and, a 30% reduction. And, and the airlines that will be flying? Uh, I, I think there will be fewer of them. Now, the, the good news for you is that, uh, you know, Aer Lingus and Ryanair together probably represented about 80% of the year-round capacity. Uh, but, uh, you know, it, you know, a critical 20% provided by a number of other airlines, uh, but some of those, you know, won't serve Ireland because uh, the market is too small and certainly, um, you know, the recovery is probably going to take longer in Ireland. So Ryanair and Aer, Aer Lingus and Ryanair are critical for our... Yeah, absolutely, option. absolutely. And it's not just Aer Lingus. I, I know we speak a lot about Aer Lingus because Ryanair of Ryanair as well. Uh, and association and with uh, Aer Lingus in the past, but Ryanair is, is equally... Uh, critical, and uh, you know, I, I agree with uh, everything Michael O'Leary has said, and I don't think he's saying anything that's, you know, different to what uh, I'm saying in relation to uh, what has happened and what needs to happen. If you had one ask of government, just open up, you know, to, to take the risk uh, because I think it's a managed risk, uh, and uh, you know, don't be overly uh, influenced by uh, the, the medical no-risk approach.